Jennifer, I was talking about this last night at the dining room table. We completely have missold the triumph of American virology, American microbiology, and our pharmaceutical business. It is stunning, as President Biden said, what's occurred. I agree. I mean, we are uh, living a much different life now than we were a year ago, um, thanks to science, and not just thanks to science in the last year, but thanks to, you know, more than a decade, several decades worth of science. This is why we invest. This is why we sustain. This is why we do this, because one day it will be necessary. It'll be, it'll be important. Dr. Nutso, can we codify the scientific advancement in a social passport, a vaccine passport that people can use, can take to go places and say, I am not at risk of getting COVID or, frankly, that high risk of distributing it either? Yeah, so it's a really tricky question. I know people are very eager to do that because we're all eager to get back to normal. And for those of us who, you know, feel like we've done our part, we went out and got vaccinated, we feel like we should be entitled um, to gain access to places. I fully expect that private businesses are going to require um, vaccine proof, uh, provided their governors don't prevent them from doing that, but that they will, um, you know, at some point start requiring vaccine proof um, to allow people to, you know, go to concerts and, and things like that. But it is a bit tricky because there are people out there who are hesitant and their, their hesitancy is not without reason. They're, this is a new vaccine. Um, you know, they maybe don't have the luxury of spending all day like I do thinking about these things. And so they still need to, you know, be convinced of the benefits of vaccinations. And, you know, I, I do worry about prematurely rolling those things out before we've had really a fair chance at winning the hearts and minds of people and showing them why these vaccines are um, so liberating and hopefully tools that they will willingly accept. Wait, to I'm be generally more in favor of carrots than sticks. Um, and so, you know, I expect that we'll probably be there at some point, but I do worry that rolling them out too quickly could create a culture war, which will entrench people in their opposition to it. So are you saying that the main reason against, the main argument against vaccine passports is an emotional one, is basically that you need to cater to the way that people feel about the vaccine first and then deal with the mandates later? No, I don't think it's an emotional one. I mean, you know, first of all, people's hesitancy is not purely about emotion. It is um, also just that, you know, we haven't fully approved a number of vaccines. I expect that that's going to come soon. But, you know, there still needs to be an educational component to it. It's more really about pragmatism. Um, that said, there's also some access issues. And um, we know that many of the people who haven't yet been vaccinated, it's not because they don't want to. It's just that they haven't been able to. And in part because it's harder for them to get. They may not have time off from work. That may be um, not as many options in all places where people live. And so, you know, we also have to be worried um, about what we restrict people from doing uh, if they haven't been vaccinated and whether that's worth it in the long run. I don't care about the emotions as much as the pragmatism. And I worry that if we create a culture war or roll these things out too quickly, Doc that we could actually dampen enthusiasm for vaccines. Doctor, what, what danger do the anti-vaxxers present? I mean, if you end up in a situation where 60, 70 percent of the U.S. population is vaccinated, are they threatened? Is that majority threatened by a minority that refuses to get the shots? Sure. So, so far, the answer is they are dangerous to themselves. The people who have not gotten vaccinated are dangerous to themselves because they risk getting vaccinated. And I'm so interested in reaching those folks and convincing them of the benefits of vaccines because I don't want there to be any additional loss of life. Of course, you know, down the road, we very much worry about, you know, as long as this virus continues to circulate at high levels, that there is the potential for mutations that could overcome vaccines. But so far, we haven't seen that. So right now, at least in the United States, that is less of my concern because our case numbers are falling. My main concern right now is making sure we protect people so that we don't see additional loss of lives, so we don't see schools close in places where um, schools have been open. Um, you know, it's, it's about getting back to normal. I'm not giving up on people. I still think we can reach them.